Hi there, it's Robin. We're doing things a little differently today, so some of the audio might sound different, lower quality than usual, or there might be some annoying sounds, and I'll try to minimize that, but I just want to say that ahead of time. What I want to look at is the volume register on the SID in the 64 or 128D. If you poke it, it's 54296. If you poke it with the maximum volume, it's a 4-bit volume register, while the volume portion of it is 4 bits. Here I got my C64 programmer's reference guide, D418, which is 54296, and the high nibble, you've got some filter, we're, we're not talking about that today, but the low nibble is the output volume from 0 to 15. So if you poke that with the maximum volume, it's kind of a quirk of the SID that makes a click. I'm going to turn the volume way up so you can hear it for sure. I apologize for any buzzing or whatever. So did you hear that little click when I, when I poke that? I'm going to poke a zero in now. So each time you turn the volume up or down, it makes, especially when you turn it up to full, it makes a click. So here. And that varies from model of SID to SID. Uh, it's actually even louder on some of the older SIDs. And it's what's used for playing digitized sounds back on the C64, rapidly clicking that volume. So we're, we're not going to be looking at digitized sounds today, but we are going to be looking at that click and kind of a strange use of it. This video is a follow-up. My last one we looked at some basic optimizations using integer variables, but a lot of the commenters were leaving other basic optimization tips. So I thought I'd address a bunch of those, and this is an unusual way to do it, kind of experimental, uh, but it occurred to me while I was while I was poking around here. So we can write a short little program like this, 54296,15, which turns the volume to maximum, and then turns it off again, and then loops around. So let's try that. So you hear that it makes a, a pitch, rapidly turning the volume to maximum and back to zero again at a regular frequency as this short little basic program is doing, causes a tone to be generated. Kind of an annoying tone, but it has a I kind of like this gritty sound. Now that pitch can actually be measured. Uh, I play guitar and bass as well. And nowadays, you know, there's electronic tuners, which were pretty revolutionary at the time and are now very inexpensive. But we can even use our phones and our tablets uh, with apps to determine the pitch of something. So I was curious what pitch this little loop is running at. So I've got this iPad app called Fine Tuner. It's surprisingly good measuring the frequency of me talking, I think, right now. I can talk lower. Oh. This is an aside, but when I'm not talking, a number around 15.7 kilohertz appears. I was really surprised that this app and that particularly the microphone built into the iPad are sensitive enough that 15.7 kilohertz is actually the sound that my real CRT here is emitting. I believe it's called the flyback is running at 15.7 kilohertz to produce the video signal. I'm no expert on this. And it's emitting a high pitched frequency that people of my age and very likely your age, if you're into 8-bit computers, our old ears actually often can't hear that frequency anymore. I know mine can only hear up to about 13 kilohertz. I've done some online tests, but when you're young, you can hear up 18, 20,000 hertz. So I've been making an effort in almost all my videos to filter out that 15.7 kilohertz. My kids can hear it, and I know some of the younger viewers can hear it. I actually forgot to filter it out in one of my previous episodes, and a few people mentioned it. And I know the 8-bit guy, because he has so many subscribers, he has quite a few young viewers, and he was previously unaware that his videos were full of that noise whenever he was using a real CRT. 
And I think he started filtering it out as well. In fact, I've even heard some Hollywood movies, the orchestra would have old school CRTs while recording. This is going back some years, presumably, because the engineers were in their, in their middle ears. They couldn't hear that sound. And apparently some big movies have this whine that made it through into the soundtrack. Anyway, sorry for that aside. Just pretty interesting that this app uh, is picking that up. Back to that tone, our basic program sharing. I'm going to turn the volume back up. Okay, so that's right around 60 hertz. When I saw that 60 hertz, that got me thinking if we can optimize it for speed, make it run faster, that will also raise the pitch that these two pokes are generating. So it seemed like an interesting way to explore how high can we make the pitch and what little basic optimization tricks can we do. So one thing we can do is just instead of poking 54296 each time with a constant, BASIC is quite slow reading these numbers because it's interpreting these every time it executes them. So instead, we can put that value into a variable, which I'm going to call V for volume, 54296. And then we're going to modify line 10 to instead poke to location V. Okay, there's our short program. And we'll run that. So that's shot all the way up to 151 hertz. So that's two and a half times faster just by using that variable. And I think that's the biggest increase we're going to see today, but there's still quite a few more things we can do. Now we can continue this further by adding another variable, A for 15, and then we can eliminate having to parse that 15 each time. Now we're up to 192 hertz. This is a good time to point out that the order of your variables actually matters. We've got V first, and because variable V is used twice, while A is only used once, you put the most frequently used variables, you initialize them at the beginning in the program, because every time Commodore Basic goes to use a variable, it looks it up again in the table, starting at the first variable you defined and jumping through seven bytes at a time until it locates the one it's looking for. So if we swap this around, if we put A equals 15 at the beginning, that 192 hertz should fall. to 190 hertz. That's a small difference, but can be significant depending on your program. And in fact, we can get a little bit more speed out of this by adding variable B and eliminating that zero. Yeah, even a single digit like zero takes a while to parse. So from 192 hertz up to 205. Now, another trick is that instead of saying that variable B for zero, as the special case, if you want to use a constant zero, even faster than using a variable, I'll get rid of that, replace the zero with a period, like a dot, a full stop, whatever you want to call it. And we'll try that. Two hundred and sixteen. That's as far as I can think of how to push this with that set of tricks. There's another thing we can do is we can swap the order of these lines around. So the initialization I'm going to put on line ten, and the actual loop I'm going to put on line zero. And of course, I have to fix this to go to line zero now. Now this is a little bit of a cheat. When you're executing a go to, basic actually starts at the beginning of the program listing and searches for the line number that you're looking for. So now that we've put our loop 
at the beginning of the program, it'll actually run even faster. But the catch is that we're going to have to run line 10 now instead of just typing run. So this has some drawbacks, but the point still stands that the earlier in the program you can move any subroutines that you're going to go to or go sub, they will run faster. So you could have the very first line in your program just be a go to later in the program, and then you would pack all your frequently used subroutines right after that first line. So it would be the second, third, fourth line. That will give you a big increase instead of putting all your subroutines at the end of the program. I forgot to go to line zero. We're going to run line 10. Two hundred and twenty five hertz. Commodore Basic, the lines of code are arranged as a linked list that starts at the beginning and then each line links to the next one. And it's because lines of Basic can be a variable length and there is no index or random access to those lines of code. It starts at the beginning and searches through each time because. Commodore Basic only knows the address of the beginning of the lines of Basic. It can't find any of the other lines without searching through this singly linked list that's just linked forward from the first line to the second to the third in one direction. Now there is one exception. When you are executing a line of code, Basic also knows the line number that it's currently executing. An obvious optimization is that if you're going to go to a line number after, it can start at the current line and then continue searching there instead of starting over again at the beginning. Okay, and I've got one more small optimization. Instead of go to zero, we can go to dot which is interpreted as zero. Did I say that earlier? And it doesn't really matter here, but we'll do it just for completeness. So let's run this one. 230 Hertz. And that's the fastest I've figured out how to get it. Do you have any ideas how to get it faster? I would appreciate it if you actually tested it. You can download the Vice emulator if you just have a PC, or if you have a real 64128, you can experiment with this. Of course, just feel free to leave whatever comments you like. Uh, it's just I'm probably not going to try all your ideas. I'd appreciate it if, if you get tested them before you suggested them. I'll show you one idea I had to make it faster, but it failed. I thought maybe instead of doing two pokes, it would be faster to do the poke and instead of the second poke, do something like A equals 15 minus A to toggle between zero and 15. This little loop here toggles between zero and 15 as long as A was 15 in the first place. So let's try that. but it's actually way lower, down around 80 hertz. And then I tried even adding a second variable, b equals a. And then instead of subtracting, using the constant of 15, but that only got it up to about 101, 102 hertz. Obviously doing that extra math takes longer. And I'd suspect using AND or XOR or whatever, doing other math trickery wouldn't be any faster than just a subtraction. Okay, so that was a, a different way of looking at some basic optimization tricks, a different way of benchmarking instead of benchmarking with the TI string that I usually use, benchmarking in Hertz with a guitar tuner app. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time.